Crohn's disease is an autoimmune disease of the intestines. People with Crohn's tend to have very unique microbiomes with lots of E. coli and related species. It has been proposed that the E. coli in Crohn's might be a special type that sticks to intestinal cell walls called M cells near the entrance of pyrus patches. Macrophages and dendritic cells, which signal an immune response, are found in pyrus patches. The E. coli is thought to activate an inflammatory immune response and may be part of the initial development of Crohn's. An interesting recent study looked at a link between the microbiome, hormones, and the development of autoimmunity. Autoimmune diseases are more common in women than men and are frequently diagnosed in adult women before menopause. People with autoimmune diseases tend to have higher levels of estrogen compared to people of the same age. This study used non-obese diabetic or NOD mice, which spontaneously develop autoimmune diabetes. The mice were raised under two conditions. Some of the mice were notobiotic, like Luke talked about last week. As a review, these are mice without any bacteria. The study also looked at pathogen-free mice. Pathogen-free mice are raised with a controlled microbiome. There are typically enough bacteria to keep the mice healthy, but nothing that is known to cause illness. In pathogen-free nod mice, more females develop diabetes than males. In notobiotic mice, the males and females develop diabetes at the same rate. There is also a difference in testosterone between the pathogen-free and notobiotic mice. Pathogen-free mice have a larger difference in testosterone between males and females. Notobiotic females had higher testosterone than pathogen-free females, and notobiotic males had lower testosterone than pathogen-free males. Transfer of fecal microbiome from adult males to young females was able to protect the young females from diabetes. Recipients of the male-to-female transfer also had higher testosterone. When a drug was used that decreased the testosterone in female transplant recipients, they developed diabetes. This is exciting because it suggests a mechanism for microbes to regulate the development of autoimmune disease. Hopefully, microbiome research can continue to look at mechanisms behind autoimmunity. Large data sets, like the American Gut Project, are important to being able to do this research. It could be very exciting if people with autoimmune diseases like type 1 diabetes, rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel disease, lupus, or multiple sclerosis signed up for the project.